This regular meeting of the Navasota City Council is called to order on Monday, the 23rd of October in Council Chambers. Let the record show all council members are present. Welcome and thank you for being here tonight. We ask that you put your cell phones in the silent mode. And a reminder to visitors, please sign in. If you wish to speak under visitors' remarks, please fill out the form found in back. State your name and address at the podium. As we must document all meeting business and remarks limited to three minutes. Tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor T.J. Green of First Baptist Church, Navasota, and followed by the pledges. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight so grateful for the many blessings that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the rain that you sent today. Uh, we thank you for how you're blessing our community. Thank you for all the great things that are going on here. Lord, I pray that you direct this council, give them wisdom and knowledge how to help us move into the future to deal with the things that we deal with on a daily basis, Lord. God, I lift them up and place them in your lap and ask you to do a work that only you can do. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor, Honor the Texas, Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Item okay. four is the staff report, and we're going to start with a proclamation for Municipal Court Week. And I'd like to call the judge up to join me. And there's and staff, yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Proclamation of the City of Navasota Municipal Court Week. Whereas municipal courts play a significant role in preserving public safety and promoting quality of life in Texas, more people come in contact with municipal courts than all other Texas courts combined, and public impression of the Texas judicial system is largely dependent upon the public's experience in municipal court. Whereas state law authorizes a municipality to either appoint or elect a municipal judge for term of office, the Navasota Municipal Court is a state court and its judges are members of the state judiciary. Procedures for the court operations are set forth in the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure and other laws of the state of Texas. The city of Navasota is committed to the notion that our legal system is based on the principle that an independent, fair, and competent judiciary will interpret and apply the laws that govern us and that judges and the court personnel should comply with the law and act in a manner that pr promotes public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the judiciary. Navasota Municipal Judges are not policymakers for the city of Navasota, but are bound by the law and the canons of the judicial conduct and are required to make decisions independent of the governing body of the city council, city officials, and employees. The city council recognizes that the constitution and laws of the state of Texas contain procedural safeguards in criminal cases for all defendants, including indigent defendants, and supports the Navasota Municipal Court in complying with such legal requirements. Now, therefore, I, Burt Miller, Mayor of the City of do hereby recognize November 6th through 10th, 2023, as Municipal Court Week in recognition of the fair and impartial justice offered to our citizens by the Municipal Court of Navasota. Bert, you've got to center and remember. Center the Get the seal in front. Center the seal. Don't forget to carry both Carrie? Carrie? Can you come join us? Sure. It's not often they want you in the picture. Yeah, no. This is an honor. serves as the prosecutor. All right. It's a great thing a little bit like you like each other. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Oh, oh, hold on. Connie. Connie's. Connie behind me.
Little shell and broke it. You talk bad about Russia. Thank y'all. While the mayor is getting back to his seat, uh, next we're going to have Peggy Johnson is going to come up and introduce uh, two of our new employees. Good evening, Mayor Miller, uh, Council Members, uh, Peggy Johnson, Human Resource Director. I'd like to introduce two of our new employees that uh, come with this to this period of time. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Andrew Drake. Yes, sir. I have no problem shaking hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love to do it. Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, with Josh. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, James. Nice to meet you. Here we go. Here. Yeah. Easy homework. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Peggy's gonna. Peggy's gonna talk about you. He's talking about you now. He's talking about you. <laughs> Sir, uh, Andrew Drake was hired with the city of Navasota on October the 2nd as a police officer in our Navasota Police Department. He come hired with 17 years of law, law, law enforcement experience. He was previously a K-9 deputy constable from Brazos County Precinct 3 with seven years, for seven years. Before that, he served with the College Station Police Department for 10 years as a police officer and later served as a corporal on the night shift. During his tenure with College Station Police Department, Andrew was awarded the Medal of Honor, Employee of the Month, Outstanding Service Out Award, Outstanding Unit Citation, and was also nominated for City Employee of the Year. Before law enforcement, Andrew served as a staff sergeant for seven years in the infantry for the United States Army. He was honorable discharged. He was responsible for the actions of a combat infantry squad that was deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Andrew is married to his wife, Corin, of 22 years, and they have two children, his daughter, Catherine, and his son, Andrew, Jr. So I'd like to, if you would, help me welcome Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Andrew. I guess for now we need a canine. Well, it, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. It's, it's, to, it's to come. I know. I'm excited. Okay. Our next new employee is Lord Lively. <laughs> okay. Lord was hired on uh, October the 16th as a marketing communications director, POI in the marketing communications department. Lord comes to Navasota from Baytown, Texas, but he grew up in Magnolia, Texas. He is a veteran multimedia specialist with a strong record in success in producing live municipality television contents, social media content, and managing public media relations, well versed in marketing, printing collateral, and video contents, creating dynamic videos, graphics, and web design. Come from a film life event background, Lord has coordinated multiple hundreds of live events, working on 178 films, 73 stage productions, and 100 of live events from concerts to wedding receptionists. He is married to Jenna Lively and has Jenna, <laughs> Jenny Lively and has one daughter, Renee, <laughs> one granddaughter, Olivia, and a dog named Samantha. So if you would help me to welcome Mr. Lord. <laughs> and I also, I'm sorry at this time I'm rushing, but I would also like to take this time too to thank 
Andrew Drake for his services that he did for us in the service. And thank, thank you. you. For that. Mayor and Council, next, uh, uh, John McKay is going to get up and give us an update on our CIP projects. So updates tonight, we'll start what we were just talking about, um, the fire hydrant project. Every hydrant that was part of this CIP, you know, kind of shot in the arm is installed. All of the concrete re work repair is done. Weather permitting, tomorrow they're going to complete the asphalt repairs, and that really puts us in project closeout. There's a couple of reflectors that need done. There's three hydrants along Washington that still need um, flow tested. There's two over by Turner Pierce, and there's one over by Southland Tidal that needs to be flow tested still. TxDOT asked that, uh, that I coordinate with uh, PD for those. It's going to be one-minute lane closures while we do the flow test but they'd rather have police on scene if there's someone available than public works flagging down the traffic. The, um, after that, we really are expecting, after this week, to be in closeout, you know, counting down square yards of asphalt for that final change order y'all love. Um, make sure we get everything included and everything that was done. Tomorrow, we're actually meeting. I know we put in this next year's budget another chunk for fire hydrants. We're meeting with a contractor out of Houston tomorrow, or I am, to look at the next steps to what we're doing this next year. So our plan of attack this next year is to look at the hydrants. There, there are still hydrants that have shields on them and there's a few that have popped up. See which ones can be rebuilt. That's what this contractor specializes in. See how many we can get rebuilt and how far we can stretch what we have before we start going back into some of the other ones. Um, the uh, that's kind of the fire hydrant project. The main CIP project, we're still chugging along on those seven streets by Webb Elementary. The water tying should be starting to happen, I'd say this, this month, but we're coming up on the end of it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've had some valve exploration that we're doing this week. We've got an extra man assigned to the team to help, help out with that, to get the water tie-ins done. That's when people start seeing when water changes over, It'll be a very fast process. It shouldn't affect customers hardly at all. Um, we have to get everyone still on the existing lines. Every meter in the entire city is still on existing lines for water. And what happens is we fill the new lines. We wait to get the test back from the state saying that that line is in fact clean. And then it's as simple as pull out the old, put in the new. Go to the next house, pull out the old, put in the new and they just walk down the street that block that they have the clean test results for and that gets us on our new infrastructure. The concrete crew should be mobilizing within the next week or two is what I've been told. They were going to mobilize this week, this weather, they didn't call them out. So it'll be either next week or the week after that they're available again to start back up on the concrete work. Um, they're going to go through and start replacing, replacing some of the curb sections and once a good chunk of that's done we're still high in January for the paving crews for that first chunk. The airport utility project is in full closeout. The, all, every bit of concrete's been poured. The first test results have started to come back in. They're good on the concrete. The forms have already been busted. They've regraded the ditch. There's a clean out cap that's remaining, but that's literally sitting in the contractor's truck and he's going to install it the next time he's heading this way from Brenham. So it's not of concern. Um, yeah, the gas project is the next thing that we have on the uh, horizon. There's Con Lakes gas loop. We've received the 90% plans from the engineer for that. The, we're reviewing that this week with a hope to bid that out probably around, start bidding around Thanksgiving award before the end of the year is our goal with that project. So we've reviewed the 30 and the 60% plans they're sitting up on the plotter. I haven't looked at the 90s yet, but there weren't very many comments left even at the 60% stage, so it should be fairly smooth. And that's really the CIP updates I have right now. If y'all have any questions. On the fire hydrants, there are a couple of them up on 10th Street that uh, I don't know if they've been tested or not. They have been, and they've been painted green. It's just the very tops of the bonnets is all that we're painting. Okay. I did get my eyes on those two specifically. If you look above the upper bolt flange, that little area that's painted green, 
Okay. <clears throat> on the um, so you, the, the fire hydrants that I've noticed don't have dirt. So like the concrete work may be done. They're there. They're painted, but there's a hole still between the curb and. The fire hydrant. Are those going to be filled in as part of this closeout? I will make sure to follow up with the contractor on that one. Okay. To make sure that we get those leveled out good. Okay. Um, the one I think so right over, right over here on Washington. It, when I when I was coming here tonight, it's still okay. empty. And then the one at McNair and okay. Neil is wide open. The splash pads are all poured at this point. I'll I just have to follow up with Taylor on that one. And then the other sure question. Get it. Okay. And the other question is about the roads. So the roads over uh, by the, by John C. Webb okay. are. You're thinking those will be addressed in January? Yes, sir. Okay. And what is the process to fix those? I didn't realize how how pulverized they were going to be from you know all the holes and all the rocks and all this stuff. So how do you go about fixing that? So it really is road by road. There's two different main things that we're doing. One is called uh, full reconstruction, is some of them. Some of them are mill and overlay. Um, I don't have off the top of my head which is which at this point. And some are some unforeseen things that we found. Uh, Judson is a good example over by Water Street. Somewhere through the years, underneath the two inches asphalt that was Judson, someone poured a 13 inch concrete slab about eight foot wide at the gutter line for about two, 300 feet. Hmm. So that'll obviously be addressed a little bit different than the rest of it will. But for a lot of it, what it is, is they bring in a large machine that they call it processing, but basically repulverizes, grinds up those top two inches, gets that going. They have asphalt machines that come in, add into it, and they have compactors that go down. And uh, once, hot, once that's new, mix, it basically, yeah, it's, it's full-blown hot mix is what yeah, it so is. I'm thinking like Water Street where it's just, right now it just looks like, and Neal Street, it looks, just looks like a bunch of rock just poured on top of the road. They would go in and scrape off the top rock and then... it's And a lot of that rock is what you see inside asphalt. You just <laughs> don't see it with the tar yeah. on top of it. Okay. But yes, they go through and they remix that. They add as they need to get back in two inches worth of new asphalt in between the curb lines. Okay. So another, it's another dusty few months. Another dusty few months, sadly. And just as a point of information, that that project is really in its infancy, right? I mean, this is there's quite a few other streets, and it's going to go for what another twelve months. Yeah, yeah. So this will be our first big paving chunk. It's a good chunk of the paving when they do come in. Again, that was an election we made in this project was to wait because the more linear foot of road you have, the bigger guns that the paving contractors in the Brazos Valley are willing to bring in. So you end up getting, it's a, it's a soft project item, but you, you know, you're, you're getting bigger equipment, you're getting more time, dedication. It, it ends up, even though it's dustier roads for a while, in general, you end up with a better product at the end of the day than you would if you just tried to bring them out for 500 foot here, 300 foot there. John, I just want to say thank you for uh, uh, reaching out to the resident that had a problem up on the east end of uh, the town here. Uh, you made that resident very happy, so thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. The, uh, for a little bit of info on that one, there was a resident that reached out concerned. There were two hydrants in a row that both are still shielded. Um, but when we, we, we knew about them, and we previously checked it, but we reconfirmed, there's just lots of hydrants in that area. So there's still adequate coverage in that area. So now the way both of those are broken, one may show up in this rebuild list. One, I'll guarantee, isn't going to. Uh, it was one that was hit by a car, and it's off at 45 degree angles over by uh, oh, what was that? Turner, I think it was. I was Turner and Whitwell. I always confuse Turner and Tyler. Yeah. But um, one of them's been hit over there. If it's been hit like that, the chances that you can just rebuild the guts are minimal. So that's a full replaced hydrant. But again, even as we stand today, there's still hydrants all over the place in that area that are working and have good flow. So. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. Any reports from council on boards and commissions? Some things coming up here <clears throat> starting tomorrow, uh, the 24th, there'll be a 
TxDOT public meeting at the Fairgrounds Lions Club building, 4.30 to 6.30. It's a come and go. It's a, uh, in regard to the I-14 project. Uh, they'll have all the maps laid out, and there'll be TxDOT officials there that you can visit with. Uh, Lanterns and Legends uh, kicks off this week. It's uh, topic is faces behind the facade. It's going to be a, kind of focusing in on a lot of the buildings downtown that have names on them and kind of giving history on that. Um, starts Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is uh, starting at 6 at the at Oakland Cemetery. And then on Sunday, they have an indoor version at the Theater Alliance building. So you can go to Navasota Theater, that's theater with R-E, dot org, uh, and buy tickets online. And uh, it's always a, a great event that the Navasota Theater Alliance puts on every year. Uh, this Friday is the last Rattler home game at Brazosport at 7 o'clock at Rattler Stadium. Uh, treats on the streets coming up on the 31st on Halloween night. Uh, you can call 936-825-6124 to uh, register your business or whatever your set up a table at Treats on the Streets. It starts at 6 and uh, I'm sure Chief's getting ready for the lines of Candy-fueled chaos. <laughs> Sugared up. <laughs> uh, on November 4th is the citywide garage sale. That is, uh, you get a permit from the city, and they'll all be listed in the November 1st examiner. So then you'll have uh, a bonus there that your, your garage sale will be listed in, in the newspaper. And then I also understand there are some possibly some spaces available for folks to use at the library from what I understood. If any, it just has a few little items they want to sell. Um, November 7th is the American Red Cross Blood Drive. It's 11.30 to 5.30 at the First United Methodist Church. You can go to red, redcrossblood.org to sign up for that. And then coming up on the 11th of November is the Veterans Day Parade. I don't have a lot of details on that. I'm, I'm I got it for you. Tentatively, I believe it's 10, starts at 10, 10 o'clock. Yep. Line up at 9 a.m. Okay. on Brosick Avenue. Parade is 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be ending at 9th Street, so they're uh, working with the police department. We've got all that worked out with the VFW. Um, at the end of it, they can either end the parade at 9th Street and go wherever they want to, uh, there will be some that will go down to the VFW because what you're fixing to mention next. And then also there uh, is a group that's doing special invites that will have a special invite only uh, luncheon at the Pecan Lakes Golf Course. Uh, and I also want to remind everybody that the city will be closed on that Friday for Veterans Day. Now I'll let you finish out with the rest of that Saturday. Okay, Saturday. also yeah, on the, in the afternoon of the 11th of November, Reds, Wheats, and Blues, hosted by the Navasota Grimes County Chamber of Commerce, is being held at the VFW. And it start, it goes from 2 to 8, I believe. <clears throat> they changed that. I believe they had another act they added, so it was 2 to 6, but I believe it's 2 to 8. Um, they added their headliner, yeah. Shiny Ribs. And you can get those tickets at the Navasota Grimes County Chamber of Commerce website. You can buy those tickets online. Uh, I know Republic Services, our trash provider, is one of the one of the big sponsors of that event as well. And then I'll just down the road, just to get on your calendar, December 9th is home for the holidays with the parade and all the festivities. And I think there may be a sipping shop going on around. Yes, I don't know. I don't know the date of I don't that. Know the date on that either. Anyway, that's it's, if haunted things are your thing, though, there's a the haunted house is going on, partnered between the Navasota City Morgue and the Elks Club Navasota, and um, 
to raise money for their camps and stuff like that. Um, the city morgue is located behind Circle P Antiques at 101 East Washington. Take your kids, you can tell them you don't want to be scared to death, and they'll make accommodations for that mm -hmm. every weekend until Halloween and Halloween night. Mayor, got a couple of Mike things. doesn't have to wear a mask. He just, <laughs> <laughs> he, he just stands there, right? I have no comment on that whatsoever. <laughs> So, Mayor, i got a couple things. Uh, yeah. So, um, this uh, Thursday night, we've got P&Z. Uh, it's been scheduled. I uh, just want to let council be aware. So, one of the items we went ahead and put on the agenda was related to the Candlewood Suites uh, for that item. If uh, So, they submitted fi everything finally to us. Uh, last week, we submitted that to our third-party um, engineering firm for review, Kimley Horn. Uh, so, if we get the stuff back and there are no further comments, we did put that as an agenda item to take action so that they, they're really eager to start. Uh, so um, if they get it to everything to us that we need to, we'll be able to have that action item at the PNZ. If not, then PNZ will have to skip over that item. But we did put it on, on the, uh, the agenda. Also, I know that some of y'all attended the Realtor breakfast um, in Plantersville last week. I know that uh, some comments uh, from TechStot were there about some of the things. Also, I've seen on social media about questions about what are the the stakes that are going along uh, 105 East and so we had a regular meeting with TxDOT. I want to make sure everybody knows what's happening. So TxDOT uh, is going to be putting up a, web, a website to kind of uh, talk about what all is happening on 105. So between Highway 6 and 249, the plan is to put some safety measures in place to add some turn lanes, uh, so left turn lanes uh, specifically um, uh, throughout that process as well as a right turn lane at 362. So anyway, so they're they're going to be putting some some turn lanes down through there to provide some safety. So that'll be one of the things. The other thing is they're going to set up a website to start that conversation about. Um, they've hired a consultant to start working with getting public meetings going about what a flyover would look like from going from. Um, we call it to we call it 105, but it's really 249, 105, and heading. Uh, uh, north on Highway 6. So they will be putting a website together to answer a lot of those questions. Uh, but just want to make sure that Council is aware that uh, TxDOT is working on that uh, to move that forward. Also, this last um, weekend, we had uh, the Inspirational Country Music Association here. Uh, it was a great event. Uh, it was well attended, uh, um, primarily by a lot of the friends and family of the contestants. We had uh, 20 contestants that, that uh, participated all day Saturday. In those, uh, we had a numerous um, uh, um, local uh, talent that was here, and we had some that came all the way from out of state. And so, uh, we awarded um, they awarded five uh, 18 plus year old or, or 19 year olds and, and up uh, their uh, five slots, and then awarded two 18 year old and under um, awarded um, winners that will move forward. Uh, I think May it's May of next year they will have an opportunity to all gather at uh, the Grand Ole Opry and uh, for their final contest and whoever the final winner is will I think get a recording uh, um, award and everything for that. Uh, they are looking at uh, wanting to come back to Navasota next year. So th so this is an annual thing that they do and so they really love Navasota. Uh, also, want to you know be sure to give credit where credits due. So originally, the, uh, Bobby Learman started this process out. She came to me, was really excited about. It. I was like, hey, is this something you think council in the city would want to do? And I'm like, yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, so she moved that that process forward. Uh, when she left, we turned that over to Yvette Fannin, and so Yvette uh, did a great job in moving that forward and um, worked really diligently to make sure that it was a success Friday and Saturday. And so Friday night we did have a huge turnout here. Um, thanks to Susie, she threw a, a wrinkle in the plans that they normally don't do. So she's like, hey, I can't be here. Do you, do you think they could sing a couple of tunes uh, while they're here? And so uh, we, we did a meet and greet. And then uh, so they got to get up here and sing, whether it was Old MacDonald Had a Farm uh, was one of the people sung, uh, or uh, some of what they submitted for their actual um, video that they submitted to ICMA to be able to um, to get chosen to move forward. So it was a great event. Um, it, it was kind of warm. But luckily, the clouds provided some cover. Uh, but uh, it, it was everybody enjoyed their time. So it was a great okay. event. And really appreciate Yvette and 
uh, Michael with um, um, our parks and, and um, facility maintenance worked out great, be able to help us out, uh, and then um, staff just putting everything together. Yeah. And to that note, um, the main lady that ran the event said that that little singing contest that we did, that she's going to incorporate that into all of their future events. So, and Michelle helped a lot too. So I want to give kudos to her. And Yvette did an awesome, awesome job. Yeah, Yvette did. She really and did. And she told me she sent me a text this morning saying how impressed they were with and how, with us and how accommodating we are, and that they do want to come back. So I thought that was really said a lot for Navasota. Yeah, and they were really good about when uh, the the, the uh, Charlene's husband. That was, um, you know, he told his story. You know, he's a two-time prison senior, <laughs> rehab um, senior and um, kind of led the emceeing of it. Uh, I, I think after every fur, one to two th two or three singers, you know, uh, talked about Navasota, talked about the downtown, talked about the mayor, talked about council, talked about Yvette and Bobby, and talked just about how everything was great. And, I mean, always bringing up the word Navasota. And so it was great. Uh, we had them on TV, so... Uh, a couple of them um, had an interview uh, along with Yvette and Lloyd, uh, as well as they were actually invited to Willie 98.7, got an interview uh, for them as well. So a lot of uh, great uh, publicity for, you know, something like this. And of the winners, one of them was from Navasota, one was from Anderson. Uh, one's from Giddings, Brenham. Yeah, Giddings and Brenham, those are the ones in Texas, and then the rest, I think, were from out of state. Yeah. Uh, well, no, one's from Rockdale. Oh, there was from Rockdale. And then the, yeah. the, oh, the one was out of state was from Mississippi. So I think this was his second or third time to try. And so my thing was, as great as he was, I was like, I can only imagine what the competition was in Mississippi uh, for him not to be chosen as one of the five. So. Wow. But yeah, they 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 really loved Navasota. No, it's not to love. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And, and what was really cool? So they even warned everybody about this train. Like, hey, <laughs> there's a train that goes by. If it, it if it disrupts you, you can restart over. It came by a couple times during the during the people singing, and they just kept on going. Didn't or you could work. just. Bust out with some Johnny Cash. And yeah. That, you know, yeah. When we had a live music venue downtown, we would joke and tell them, if the train starts to go by, we want you to just bust straight into Folsom Prison Blues yeah. and then back in your music when this horn stops. They were, they were really <laughs> impressed, and we, we did set a mark. So we thank you all for uh, at least budging us some funds for that, and you know we'll try to stick with it for next year too. So. I think that's awesome. You all did a great job. Item number five, consideration of possible action to approve resolution 750-23, authorizing the city manager to approve contract change orders that are less than 25000 <coughs> as long as the project is within budget. Mayor Council, as, as John's coming up here, so the wording on that says less than, and the actual resolution says up to, and so um, uh, Carrie corrected me this morning and said it should read up to twenty five. so uh, depending on... Uh, how your motion goes, can you make sure that you don't read word for word for the word here, and it should be up to 25. Mayor and City Council, this is a policy. It, it takes takes a resolution to enact, but it's something that I'm actually excited for. I know multiple times I've been up here for $1,000 or $1,300, and it's a lot of paperwork on the city to go ahead and get all that done. I, I still remember one time, a couple of years back, I had to come and ask for a negative $600 change order. And really what this is for is on these projects, was we get more and more projects going on in the city, is to make that a more streamlined process. I still am answerable to Jason, to Jennifer on these projects, and for the smaller changes, we'd like to go ahead and be able to deal with that at the city staff level. Uh, state law actually, correct me if I'm wrong, Carrie, state law says that we can actually go up to 50000 we still want to be transparent, so we put the limits on ourselves to be $25,000 and only if the project is under budget. Those are limits that we placed on ourselves in this policy. Yeah, currently right now you have a resolution that allows the city manager up to uh, 25000 for anything, and so just kind of want to keep in the same line with that. 
uh, from just administrative standpoint, uh, the plan would be on anything, we, any change order we have that would be coming under, uh, if approved under my preview for approving, uh, I would be sure to let council be aware of that uh, by email, so at least you're aware of, of that change order coming. That's all I have. Mr. Mayor, I have moved to approve resolution 750-23 authorizing the city manager to approve contract contract change orders that are up to $25,000 as long as the project is within budget. Second. Motion by Ms. Peterson, second by Mr. Gessner to approve resolution 750-23. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, item carries. Item 6, consideration of possible action to approve a contract between the City of Navasota and Teal Services, LLC, in the amount of $123,070 for the purchase and installation of materials and associated items related to emergency repairs to one of the digester blowers at the City's wastewater treatment plant, as authorized by Section 252.022A3, Texas Government Code, as a procurement necessary because of unforeseen damage to public machinery, equipment, or other property. Aaron, City Council, this is one I'm not excited to bring to y'all, but it is a necessary one. Um, so out at our wastewater plant, we have a couple of different processes that go on. I know we've been talking about the clarifiers recently. So what the clarifiers do is settle out the gunk. Well, what happens to the gunk? The gunk's going to something called our digester. And the idea in these digester is there's, there's bugs in that gunk that they need. They can eat each other as long as you give them enough air to eat you know, to, to, to breathe while they're eating, and they slowly <laughs> pass themselves down. That's what the digester is. It, it takes a lot of gunk and makes it less gunk just because they eat each other. That takes a lot of air. And we, within a week of each other, lost both of our blowers. We've been running on a rental since then. It's smaller, but it's keeping the process alive. It's just not very efficient. Um, and our permit says that we need to have a bigger blower. So this is to get us going on that larger blower. This contractor is one we've worked with quite closely. He's actually the guy who pulled them for diagnosis. Uh, he's the same contractor that worked on the clarifiers. He reached out. We told him we needed him to reach out to three different vendors for proposals for blowers. This is the lowest of those suppliers. It's the same guy. We didn't go out for full bid for it, but he's very familiar with our plan. He does good work for us. And this, these blowers are, I, I just did some back the napkin math, if they were blowing water, not air, it's enough to fill our city pool in under 30 seconds. And that's the kind of airflow that we need on these, and we need to at least get one of those back up and running. And it's a five-month lead time, even if we pull the trigger now. And I'll be honest, if y'all approve this measure, I'll be texting him as soon as I sit down to tell him, go, 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 because we need it. And it'll actually be an improvement, like you're saying. It'll actually it, it, make, something, the, make the system more yeah. efficient. So the existing ones were part of the 95 expansion. They run them almost every day. How many daily drivers do you know out there that are almost 90, 30 years 95? old? 95? Yes, sir. No. So. And the reason we're bringing this to you, number one, is it's over $50,000, so we have to have your approval. Um, and it falls under uh, Section 252.022A3. Carrie wants to say anything else. It, it, uh, it for these un, unforeseen public necessity items, we that pro, it allows us a, a clause so we don't have to bid it out, and so we can immediately right. go right. straight correct. to uh, purchasing because of uh, the necessity. Safety, right? Yes, sir. that's correct. Yeah. Well, it we, we, like we, we needed it yesterday. Yeah, so <laughs> so it's the it's the same way that we had ended up having to do for the clarifier. So um, and so, I want to make all sure also you understand. So we this is an unbudgeted item, and so we did budget. Two hundred thirty thousand dollars for our phase two CIP project, similar to what we budgeted last year. We budgeted for it. We ended up having to use those funds for the clarifiers. Uh, so uh, that's where we're going to pull the funds from. So if we still, at some point, we're going to have to do phase two, um, and if it's this year, then we'll have to come to you and find funds for it and do a budget amendment for that. Hopefully, by then, we'll have the audited numbers back. We'll know more where we are financially. Um, but right now, we're going to. CIP projects on hold, use the money for this because this is, this is something we have to have done. I am going to go ahead and speak for half a second on that one and say the CIP project. I'm going to fight to, to get to Jason for that budget amendment because that is something that we need as well. So we've already pared that down this year about as far as we can. 
for permitting reasons, it's still something I'm, I'm going to at least go to bat for. What did we budget for the CIP program? The two hundred and thirty six eighty one. And so we're going to use 230. Uh, so no, so we're going to use the amount requested. The amount we're asking tonight is 123,000. So we're going to use uh, 123 of the 230. So this is going to leave a. Uh, it will leave some more that we would actually have to come back for budget amendment. Yes, sir. I just have to. So what do we have to do now to, to get the it. wastewater plant back up to par, complete, 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 complete list? We have work on both of the twin clarifiers. They're done in 77. Their main transmission boxes are currently, the gears are welded. We, we literally got a guy out there to weld gears onto the, teeth onto the gears. The second blower should be up and running for redundancy. Um, it's gray area in the, the code whether or not it's needed, but everything else in that plant's required by law to have redundancy. Mm -hmm. We have two rotors on track A that are down out of three. Remember that word, redundancy. We don't have it in that track right now. Um, we have some electrical issues we got to chase out. Let's see here. Generator. The generator, one of the generators is from 77. That's part of the chasing out the electrical issues. Belt. And the belt press is long overdue for an overhaul. That's the, after this digester, after we get the gunk kind of down, they felt feed it through a really complicated piece of machinery called a belt press that dries it out and makes it no more like a cake thing. And that's what we actually haul off to City of Ryan. So it's years overdue for um, an overhaul on some of its parts, some of its wearable parts. Yeah, that's just that's just not right. Being called cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and you got to see the process too. It looks like a cake. Though. Well, but I'm, but it, yeah. it may look like it. It's not a yummy cake, obviously. No, it doesn't smell too good. I, no, the, no. the tour out there gives you plenty of, <laughs> of knowledge about yeah. that. You learn about cake. Yeah, it's yeah. like calling it's the, not the septic cake. truck the honey pot or something like that. No, in the y'all have the, such a great sense of humor. <laughs> Uh, scales are the other thing. Uh, some of the, the chlorine, where we have those one-ton scales for the chlorine, chlorine's quite corrosive, so they're rusting out. That that was in, that's in our plan still this year to take care of is get those replaced. So that just lets us know when we need to reorder stuff. Is there any emergency type state grant? Opportunities for anything like this? We, we, I've asked you I'm that. I'm sure you've looked into sure it. Yeah. Generators is about it. So that's yeah. But yeah, other than yeah, that, we I'm haven't found anything else. Just throwing it out there. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve a contract between the City of Navasota and Teal Services LLC in the amount of $123,070 for the purchase and installation of materials associated items related to emergency repairs to one of the digester blowers at the city's wastewater treatment plant as authorized by Section 252.022A3, Texas Local Government Code, as a procurement necessary because of the unforeseen damage to public machinery, equipment, and other property. Second. Motion by Mr. Fultz, second by Ms. Peterson to approve. The contract between the City of Navasota and Teal Services in the amount of $123,070 for the emergency are for the repairs for the purchase and installation of materials and associated items to the wastewater treatment plant. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, item carries. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Item 7 is the consent agenda, which includes the minutes for September, municipal court report for September, and the second reading of Ordinance 1033-23, approving project plan and financing for the City of Navasota Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone, or TERS, number 1. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Mr. Gessner, second by Mr. Fultz to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, item carried. And the last item, we're adjourned. <laughs>